Thanks for joining us today on CM Live. I'm Colin Noir. With us today is Joe Kurtenbach. He's the managing editor of American Rifleman and one of the official and most popular publications from the NRA. What's going on, Joe? Hey, Colin. How's it going, man? Doing good. Doing good. I always love these segments where I can talk to somebody who can relate to to some of the things that I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's not a lot of us out there. I no, mean, there's, there's not. It's like a really small community of people who really understand the kind of subtle intricacies and just the overall weird chaos that is reviewing firearms and especially when it comes to publications like American Rifleman as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, how, how long have you been with American Rifleman? I've been here for five years. 2011, uh, started out as an assistant editor and actually the HR lady here at uh, Linda Crouch, she's an awesome woman here at NRA, uh -huh. tried to talk me out of the job um, originally. She said, you know, it's... Why? it's uh, but it, well, it was, uh, you know, I'd applied for a different job here and, and she said, well, I've got this opening. You're kind of perfect for it, but you're probably overqualified. And I mm. said, well, if it's foot in the door, let's do it. And we, yeah. here we are. So now I'm the managing editor and things are rolling. That's pretty awesome, man. And so, so what do you consider now being the best part of the job? Oh man. I mean, there's a lot of great opportunities here. Uh, we, we have the day to day, obviously, which mm. is putting together, a magazine that goes to more than two million people every single month. Uh, you know, we are not on newsstands. We're not anywhere else. We go directly to NRA members' mailboxes uh, every single month. Um, and uh, of there's a few official journals. There's actually four four now. Uh, but American Rifleman is by far the largest. Um, and so we have that as the day to day. But on top of that, mm -hmm. you know, one of our primary responsibilities is getting out there. Uh, and putting hands on the new products in the firearms industry, testing them out, and then reporting our findings, of course, to the members. That's our primary goal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, so it's it's I mean, a it's, lot of fun. It's, it's I, I mean, I can imagine it being a hell of a task simply. And, you know, of course it's fun. It's, you know, especially for people like you and I enjoy doing stuff like that. <laughs> right. But, but I can imagine it, it's got to be a lot of pressure, too, from the standpoint that, we're not, I mean, people are going to be buying guns based off of your recommendations and the things that are in this magazine. Um, and guns aren't cheap and they're not getting any cheaper. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting thing because one thing we do here is we consider ourselves a, a resource more than just a entertainment or, or, gotcha. uh, information publication. You know, we're a resource. We have guys who, I kid you not, they'll call and they'll tell me like, Two years and three months ago, I saw this article that you guys put in there. I'm finally getting around to working on that project. Oh, by the way, I'm a life member. Can you send me that article again? That's something we do. It's like a member service, but people hold on to these magazines and hold on to these articles, yeah. and it influences their buying habits. It influences their their pet projects. Um, you know, and and one thing that we found that our readers really do is they buy guns. They buy lots of guns, um, and and so it's it's always a task to be right and to be fair and to yeah. be honest about our findings with all the firearms. Yeah, and then, you know, and I, I always tell people that all the time, the, one of the hardest things, especially when it comes to recommending certain guns and platforms, is learning what is actually objective and what's actually your bias. Right. You know, how, how do you typically handle that? Um, not only from your personal, like the personal articles that you write, but also from, as far as being an editor, other people's articles where you can determine, uh, I think you've kind of injected more of your own bias in this particular article versus actually being objective. Do you? Yeah, I think you see an American Rifleman. I think you see a different voice maybe from other firearms publications, mm -hmm. which uh, we, have, we have five uh, full-time print editors on staff here. And uh, all of us, you know, we try and maintain that high level of professionalism. And we're kind of checking each other throughout. Like, are you just getting a little gushy here over this <laughs> M1A? You know, are you, is this really worthwhile? How can um, you not get gushy over the M1A? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know, I mean, there's just, everyone has their preferences, right? Yeah. But we have a, a great staff here that, that we kind of help check each other, keep it in balance. And at the end of the day, uh, we always come back to being that resource. So we need to make sure that we've covered all the bases with the technical facts, the specifications, um, and we have, you know, defined protocol on how to test a firearm. So every firearm in every category that we have, it's tested the same way. So you can compare side by side, uh, you know, two different two different versions of a similar firearm platform. Now, um, that being said, can you give us a little bit of insight into kind of what those standards are? Or is, or oh yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, take take your your rifle standards for example. Uh, every firearm that we shoot is going to be tested with three different types of ammunition, and usually what we try and do is get uh, different bullet weights mm-hmm. is usually a great way to do it, uh, and different manufacturers. So we might have um, a load from Winchester, a load from Remington, a load from Hornady, uh, as an example. Uh, all different bullet weights. Um, each one of those. We fire 10 rounds over a chronograph to get the different velocities mm-hmm. um, so we can report how those uh, compare to you know, the advertised velocities and how they perform in this firearm. And then from there, there's at least uh, 25 rounds fired with each of those um, for five five-shot groups. So we kind of go above and beyond in terms of accuracy uh, in that a lot of people, the standard is three shots. We shoot five shots for a group. Um, and for rifles, it's done at 100 yards. For pistols, it's done at 25. For the compact pistols, it might be 15 or 7, mm. um, depending on the, the purpose and design, because it, you don't need to shoot your LCP2 at 25 yards. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> you're asking to be humbled and frustrated, probably. <laughs> right. Uh, but we have those set criteria. So when you're, when you're reading about a rifle in American Rifleman and you see another one the next month, you can compare those side by side and know that the, the testing protocol was the same. Gotcha. And so uh, what, what's your favorite issues to cover? Yeah, lately I've been doing, um, well, so I guess a little background. I came to American Rifleman from the Army. So when okay. I got here, I was the only, well, actually I still am, the only person on American Rifleman staff with military service. And for whatever reason, that made me the AR guy right off the bat. <laughs> I was the AR guy. Like, <laughs> you're, you're doing the ARs now. Which was cool, but I kind of cooled on that a little bit because that's all I'd been using uh-huh. in the military. That was that was already a strong suit of mine. I felt like uh, so in the first few years I worked here, all I wanted to do was anything else. Um, so a lot of pistol shooting, a lot of shotgunning. I mm-hmm. got into those. I'm kind of coming back now and just I enjoy the overall. Um, but when it comes to writing, I one of my preferred things to do is to write about a company mm-hmm. uh, from the perspective or not from the perspective of a firearm, but with the context of a new firearm introduction. You know, what does this mean to the company? I mean, yeah. What does this show about the company? What is what are the steps the company had to grow to produce this new product? So I think one of the things that a lot of the mag uh, not well, American riflemen specifically, um, what it does a good job of is providing a lot of context for the culture. Um, as far as the gun industry is concerned, because I think for a, a lot of us, including me and myself in that, in, in that space, sometimes we'll review a gun and leave it in its own little vacuum. Like, like you were just talking about how you like to incorporate the idea of, okay, what is the impact for this particular gun on this particular company as it exists in the world of the gun industry? Right. Um, and I think for a lot of us, we don't necessarily always do that. We just take the gun for what it is. Um, as its own little personal offering, and that's it, as if there are no ripple effects as a result of this particular gun coming out and how that's going to affect the company. What does it mean for the company? What's, where's the direction of, that this company is going? Um, and I, and I, I think it's a bit of a disservice in many ways because when I, I watch a lot of car reviews and they never, they always marry the product to the actual company and what that means for the company. Um, and right. So, and, and so I definitely, I definitely think that is a one, one net positive that, that you guys do at Rifleman that I can really appreciate. I definitely think it's important, too. Um, y- you know, you don't have to rehash every time we deal with a 1911. You don't have yeah. to go all the way back to John Browning, you yeah. know. <laughs> and, um, but but in, in that vein, uh, a couple of years ago, I reviewed a couple of uh, Rock Island Armory guns, which Rock Island Armory is the, the firearms branch of Arms Corps, which is, you know, one of the largest producers in the world of ammunition in 1911s, and it's based in the Philippines. Yeah. Um, and digging into that story, it was just super interesting. I mean, that's just that's just one example, but a small sporting goods company founded by a couple of expatriates uh, that during the Japanese occupation sold hats to get through the war. <laughs> um, and then as soon as the Japanese left, got back into sporting goods, guns, and now they're one of the largest uh, firearms producers and ammunition manufacturers in the world. So just kind of crazy. getting those interesting stories, that's, that's the fun part. Yeah. I mean, just kind of digging in. I gotta, I gotta be honest. I gotta get on soapbox real quick here, and I'm known for doing this. Um, you, you pointed out like a lot of people always wanting to bring up John Browning when, when we talk about the 1911. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's it, do it. <laughs> it it's, it's, well, because for me, it's like, because like I watch a lot of car reviews, and every time yeah. I watch an Aston Martin car review, they always have to bring up James Bond. Yeah. And I'm like, you don't have to do this. Stop doing that. The same right. way with the 19. I, I, I get it. Browning, 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 Browning. Everybody loves Browning. 
<laughs> we <Right>. get it. <laughs> so no, I just, it gets annoying. Right no, you're right on. I mean, <laughs> l- th- listen, uh, there's uh, there's no doubt there's a huge place in firearms history for JMB. I yeah. mean, he is the man. He, he, he One of the greatest firearm designers of all times. But do we really have to reference him every time we deal <laughs> with uh, not even just the 1911 or one of his direct designs, yeah. but any firearm that may have one characteristic that Whatsoever. he ever yep. thought about? <laughs> I mean, it's just... Now you, but, you you know we're gonna get lynched in the comments for this, right? Well, of course, of course. yeah, JMB for life. Let's, let's right. do it. It's, it's I love good. I love Browning. I love Browning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna take a quick break. Um, when we come back, we're gonna talk with uh, Joe about the NRA Gun of the Week. <laughs> 